Are we good? We are good. What a blessing it is uh, for me to be here, to have God give me the opportunity to have a friendship with Bishop Santos for 24 years is a gift, which I'm very grateful for. Bishop, we've seen uh, easy things, we've seen hard things. When we first were knitted together, God did it so that we could bring value to each other and bring change. And I am a different man because of you and because of your ministry and because of this church family. I am a better person because of First Baptist Church here. So Tarlock, thank you. TFBC, thank you for who you are, the amazing work that you're doing. My goal today is to bring in inspiration, energy, and life to the very things that God has already placed in you that it will just come to life. I'm so grateful because I have seen the deep goodness of God in your worship, in your cell groups. I've been to some of the EGR myself here and helped transform my life to get to be here several, several years ago. And friends, the uh, truth for you is that God is doing a great forever work in your lives. You are rising to your destiny of greatness. You are. And in that destiny of greatness, part of your job, you have a job and that is to help others come into their greatness in Christ as well. So thank you that God can entrust that job on TFBC. Are you ready to walk in your greatness, in your destiny to bring others to greatness? I loved our song, How Great Thou Art. God has so much greatness that if TFBC, you take all of his greatness, he just makes more greatness for others. He wants to make you great to take his greatness to others. I would like to share a story with you that I read. I love this story. It's called The Man with the Coconuts. Here's the story. One day, a man who had been to gather his Coconuts loaded his horse heavily with the fruit. On the way home, he met a boy whom he asked, how long would it take to reach the village? If you go slowly, said the boy, looking at the load on the horse, you will arrive very soon. But if you go fast, it will take you all day. The man could not believe the strange speech, so he hurried his horse. But the coconuts fell off, and he had to stop to pick them up. Then he hurried his horse all the more to make up for the time that he had lost. And of course, the coconuts fell off again. Many times he did this, and it was night when he reached his home. The power of this story is if you slow down, you can speed up. If you slow down, we can speed up. And this is one of the most beautiful things I see in the Filipino culture. You are able to look at one another and to realize what matters most and you slow down to make sure you are doing what matters most. In the story, the boy looked at the horse and he could see the load was heavy. So he cautioned the man, slow down. 
I think this same story could be told in the United States, but it would go like this. A man had his truck and he saw an Amazon van. He pulled alongside and started to steal all the packages from the van and he put them in his truck. And then he saw a young boy and he said, is there a shortcut out of here so I will not be caught? The young boy said, there is a shortcut, but I will only tell it if you give me half of the packages you stole. The man and the young boy started to fight. And then the Amazon man came out and saw his van being broken into. He called the police, but the police said they did not want to come. That's the story of America. In America, we do not slow down to speed up. In fact, our motto is more like this, and please hear it, because it's unfortunate and we need to be able to receive from the culture of the Philippines. Our motto is, get as much as you can, as fast as you can. That is an unhealthy way to live. In some terms, it's called unsustainable. In God's terms, it's called sin. It's toxic. It's poison. It's poison to the community. Bishop, when I come here, I feel like the poison is taken away from me. And I'm refreshed by the Filipino culture that knows how to love and honor and slow down and do what matters most. And friends, I recognize that this day that who you are is great. And may your greatness continue to make a difference all over the world. That's why friends from South Africa and Singapore and other areas are here. It's not because we want to speak to you, it's because we want to learn from you. Anyway, I'm, I'm not sure if your story of the man with the coconuts is true or not. It could be true, it sounds so believable. I read 36 of the Filipino folklore stories and that was the one that meant the most to me and why I wanted to share it today. But you know, I'd like to tell you another story today of a man who really is real. And he came 2,000 years ago, but his message is harder to believe than the young boy in the folklore. In his message, the Lord Jesus Christ said, I want you to seek my kingdom and my righteousness and everything else will be given to you. He turned the whole thing upside down. The way Jesus lived when he walked this world was remarkable. He said the least would be the greatest. He said that the real wise is in the mouth of the baby and the child. Jesus was one who said he would leave the hundred to find the one. His math is so weird, his advice is so different. To understand Jesus, sometimes we have to take the way we see life and turn it upside down. And maybe, just maybe today, he will turn our lives upside down. Maybe today, just today, he will give us ears to hear and a heart to receive the amazing kingdom of God that's so different than what we see in our own world. And I ask him to do that. Will you pray with me now? Father God, give us eyes to see. Give us ears to hear. Give us a heart to know your heart. Lord, we open ourselves to you. We put aside those things that compete, that make a contest against you and your kingdom. And it is the desire of our heart today to say to you, yes, Lord.
All right, are we ready to slow down, to speed up? If we are, there's three things that we will do. Number one is that we'll have to understand there is nothing, nothing more important than to seek God. Number two, seeking God will cost us something. And number three, eternal life gives us, each of us, access to the very throne of God now. And to that I say, wow! If you could just look at these truths, please. These are lessons from Jesus. For some of us, they may seem like they're nonsense to like the man to the young boy. What, what speech do you speak, boy? But to Jesus, these are the words of life. These are the truths that we must align our lives to today. If we want everything to fall into place, we must receive these three truths from Jesus. All right, let's look at them. Number one, there is nothing more important than to seek his kingdom. And friends, really his kingdom is him. Wherever God is, there is his kingdom. It's really seeking his presence. Sometimes I hear people say, I just want to go home to heaven. Why? Heaven's in you. Access heaven now. Why are you waiting? Don't be lazy. Don't be confused. I know it's crazy. I know it's like, oh, I have to hurry to get there. No, slow down and understand that we can access his kingdom now. When we seek him, he will be found. He loves to be found. He is the pearl of great cost. He is waiting to be discovered. His kingdom can be difficult to see because it's so different than the kingdom of man. The kingdom of man said, says, I must try to find things to give me purpose. I must try to create things to give me power. God gives his power away to those who seek him. And when we put these things in order, God says, I've set it up to where everything else falls into place. What's confusing to me, my friends, is that sometimes I'm not seeing God's kingdom in my life. Is that the way for you sometimes too? Sometimes it's hard to see how God's moving in our kingdom. A friend of mine who was a prophet, Alan Smith, he's a dairy farmer from North Carolina, and he speaks with a southern accent, but he hears from God. And when he shares things, they're often very deep and right. He reminds me of Joshua Santos. He's very deep. He listens, he listens, and he listens some more. And then when he speaks, at first I think, what did he just say? Because it's so deep. And then it lands, and everything's different. And this is what he said to me. He said, sometimes God moves so fast you can't see him. He said, it's like a race car flying through, and you have to have the camera slow down just to see it. What color is the car? Show that again. No, it's white and orange and blue. You will see it in slow motion. Sometimes God moves so fast, it's hard to see him and to see what he's doing. Therefore, we must slow down to speed up. He is moving. Maybe he's just moving very fast, but he's moving. Sometimes, this prophet said, he's moving so slow we can't see him. And it's like time elapsed photography. 
where there's a flower and you know the flower is alive and growing, but you can't see it because it's growing so slow. But he's moving. He's moving. T, F, B, C, he is moving in your midst. This is how he moves through the bishop. Bishop, you have accomplished more with Christ in one lifetime than many do. And I honor you. I honor you that when God says speed up and step out in faith that you do. I honor you for that. And you inspire me and you've inspired people all over this land and this continent and this planet. What a beautiful thing. I'm glad God made you the way he did. It's beautiful. Sister Edith, you are that flower. <laughs> you are slow and quiet and beautiful and powerful. Thank you. Thank you. And you bloom just in season. You bloom just in time. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving my daughter. For I see the beautiful life of you in the Filipino culture and Sarah baby. Thank you. Thank you so much, Santos family. And now I can't see my notes. I'm not crying, it's just very hot and my eyes are sweating. That's all that is. <laughs> ah. Friends, we must slow down to see what matters most in life. We must slow down to see what matters most in life. I say it this way, God's kingdom. Oh, thank you. God's kingdom is from everlasting to everlasting. Of course it's hard to see. Of course it's hard to see. God has always been and always will be. God himself, when he breathes, eternity comes out. Everything he has made has his eternal fingerprint in it. We are part of the DNA of God in the very way he made us. Therefore, eternity is even in our hearts, calling us to know the heart of the Father. That's the way he's done it. That's the power of knowing that everlasting from everlasting is our Father. And he is allowing us to understand the difference between what matters most, what has eternal value, and what is just stuff. I say it like this, if it does not have eternal value, then why would we pick it up? If it does not have eternal value, then why should we even pick it up? Number two, these are the ABCs of being able to make sure that we seek his kingdom. A, it's from everlasting to everlasting. B, my friends, his kingdom is love. He is love. His kingdom is love. His kingdom will always have a residue of love in it. That's how we know. It's interesting. People have once told me that when you read the Old Testament, it is the book of wrath of God, the law of God, the anger of God. And when you read the New Testament, it is the book of the love of God. That is not true. 
the Old Testament too is the book of love. If you don't believe me, a month ago I decided to read whenever God said in only the Old Testament that his loving kindness is everlasting. So if he's everlasting and his love is everlasting, that is a good God. How many times in the Old Testament alone does God himself say that his love is everlasting? 50 times, 50 times. The year of Jubilee times, 50. There's many other times where he talks of the love of God. Friends, God's loving kindness, Kehesed, is also everlasting. So when you experience the kingdom of God, we will see the love of God. And when we walk in the love of God, it will have a forever impact. Just like truth never returns void, friends, love is everlasting, therefore it never returns void. What we do out of love will last forever. Every hug you've given, every time you've gotten up early to love on your children, to feed, to take care, to prepare, every time you defer an honor to put another before you, every time you take a moment just to look and to say I love and to care, every time those acts go on forever. And every time we do them, guess who's looking? He slows down to speed us up. He sees, he watches, he knows. I'm so thankful. His love has no conditions. That's what it means. He has unconditional love. He doesn't love us because of the way we behave. He loves us so that we will behave differently. He knows his love will change us. He knows his love will penetrate our heart at the deepest place. I am so glad that he says of himself, God is love. I'm so glad he doesn't say, God is angry unless you love me right. We must flip things, fathers. We must flip things. We must begin in love and end in love. We must give a gentle response in love. If there's a condition on our love, people are smart and they will see right through it. So in other words, if we say, I want to bless you so that you can bless me, that's a condition. If we say, I want to spend time with you to get something from you, that's a condition. If we say, I want to help you so that later on you can help me, that's a condition. God says that's human love. That's how humans do it. In his love, he says no conditions, unconditions. And so I say it like this, if there's conditions in the way people love you, don't pick it up. Don't get entangled by it. Don't let it tangle you up because it will only snare you. Love that has conditions is a trap. It's a human trap. In America, the companies say, oh, if you buy our products, it will make you beautiful. If it makes us beautiful, give us your products. You don't want us to be beautiful. You want to be rich. Who are you kidding? There's a tanglement. If you wear Air Jordans, you will play like Michael Jordan. Are you kidding me? Michael Jordan was six foot six or seven. He can jump and grab the top of the board. But, you know, come on. Buying his shoes will not turn me into him. But could you, if he really cares about me, maybe he will just take a selfie with me. That would be good. 
If there's a condition, it's not unconditional love. Pure love from the Father has no conditions. Number three, if you really want to seek his kingdom, you have to understand. Remember, number one, it's everlasting and it's eternal. Don't look for it in human forms. Number two, or human places. Number two, his kingdom will have that eternal love, everlasting love. And number three is that his kingdom will come alive in love. It's just not with love. It comes alive in love. And what I mean by this is that when he is imparting something to us, we don't know, we don't just know that he loves us. We also know it will change us. It will change us. If you get a letter from somebody or a card and it says, I just wanted to say I love you, we're grateful for that card. But that card may or may not change us. But if that person shows up in our house and says I love you and gives you a hug, that's different. It comes alive. We want to make sure that we allow his love to come alive. And he can do that not just through truth, but he takes truth and love and puts them together and that comes alive. Let me give you an example. In scripture, in Psalm 85 verse 10, it says this, loving kindness and righteousness have come together. Can you hear that? Loving kindness and truth, excuse me, loving kindness and truth have come together. Righteousness and peace have kissed. When loving kindness and truth come together, all of a sudden there is a sense of righteousness that we don't have to fight for, that we don't feel guilty about, but we have peace and shalom instead. My wife had to correct me a few weeks ago. She didn't have to, but she chose to. She said, sometimes you're, you're getting too intense and it's not helping. And I said, what do you mean I'm getting too intense? And she said, with love, you don't have to speak loud or scream for love to be heard. People know love and truth when they hear it. They know. And it will come to life. You don't have to scream to make it real or alive. I was so grateful and I want to say to you, uh, now I'm speaking to young persons. If there's a person who comes to you and they want to share truth with you in love, let that come together. Listen to what they say. They're not trying to hurt you. They're trying to help you. Let them help you. And you will see that maybe you want to be right, you don't want to be wrong, you will fight with righteousness. Let righteousness fall aside. Let righteousness and peace kiss. Let your peace be in the fact that you have heard what they said, that you have honored what they said. It's such an important thing for us to get to do. And so when we do those things, God's kingdom prevails. However, point number two, God's kingdom will cost you something. God's kingdom is free to everybody, but it's not cheap. <laughs> Friends, God's kingdom is free, but it came at the highest of all costs. God gave his very life in Jesus Christ to die for us out of his love for us. His love was so great that he laid down his own life. It cost him everything. And yet he does not say, I will now sell it to those who behave the way I want. He doesn't say, I'm going to use the life of Christ with conditions so that I can get followers. He says, look at the life of my son. Can anyone see love? If you can see love in that, then you will be made right. And until you see love in what I've done for you in Christ, nothing will make us right. 
Friends, I have a doctorate degree in leadership and ministry. I've studied almost every religion in the world. And every religion does not understand what I just said except Christianity, the true Christianity. There are re religions that say there is a yin and that there's a yang, and evil and good must work out things together. They balance each other. No, they don't balance each other. Good overcomes evil every time because love is better than, than evil. Come on. There is no balance. We're to forsake evil to be able to walk in good. Evil comes at a cost and Jesus paid it. There are religions that say, oh, you may not be able to figure it out so you can be reincarnated and given another chance to try to figure it out or even worse, work it out. Jesus doesn't want you to work it out. He already died so that we don't have to. How, it doesn't matter how many times we go backwards. We can't undo the things we've done. You can go backwards a million times, but it's still been done. In Jesus' kingdom, he forgives us instead. He forgives us instead. And then it's done. You see what I'm saying? Be careful with what other religions promise because there are conditions attached to it that make no sense. They're not his kingdom. Why? Because they want to protect the righteousness of man. They want man to be able to say, I've done it. There are religions that say if you climb the ladder, you will reach nirvana. Are you kidding me? I don't want to spend my whole life climbing a ladder? That sounds American. <laughs> Jesus came down the ladder, friends. He came down the ladder and he said, can you just receive from me my love and acceptance? Can you lay down your pride, your hurts, your pains? Can you put them aside, your own righteousness, and receive mine? When I was an eight-year-old boy, I was walking down a street called The Guide in Bellingham, Washington. The street's name was The Guide. Isn't that interesting? A street named The Guide. I'm walking down it with my sister, and a man is across the street a, a very tall man, and he said, hey boy, come over here. And so I did. I crossed the street with my sister and I went over to him. And as I got close to him, the very tall man got down on his knee and he looked at me in the eye and he said, do you believe that God loves you? Nobody had ever asked me that question before. And I thought about it. And I said, yes. And then I realized I just said I believe in God. I, had, I never even was given an opportunity to think on God hardly. I said, yes, I do believe that he loves me. And then the man said, may I ask you another question? Do you believe he would forgive you for anything you've ever done wrong? And I thought about it. And I said, yes, if he loves me, he would forgive me. And it made sense to me. It made perfect sense that God himself being great would give his love away freely to a young boy who needed it. And then he said one more thing. And he said, and do you want him to come with right here? And he touched me in my heart. And I said, yes, I do. And I asked him right there on the street corner of the guy with my sister standing at my side. I said, Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me. Forgive me and please come live in my heart. My life got completely changed as an eight-year-old goofy kid. And now when I go through this world, I look for eight-year-old boys, not evil but to make sure they understand there's hope and good and love and joy. Yesterday we stopped to get gas and a little, eight, little boy, he looked like he's about eight year old, knocked on the window and he had a sign and it was in Tagalog on his forehead, he was asking for something. And Bishop was out doing with the gas. And I said, Lord, I see myself right there. 
I see me when I'm eight years old. And so I pulled in my wallet and I gave him a blue Filipino one, the thousand, I don't, I think it was a, th it, it's the blue one. And I folded it up and I gave it to him and I said to him, this is for you, for you. And the, and the boy, he was smart. He looked at me and he looked around and he went away very quickly. I live to give hope. I live to give hope and truth and to change things in people's lives. Why? Because God's love is so great towards me. Why would I not want to give it away? That's what we do with his love. All right, so if you want to be able to lay down our righteousness, there's three things that you do. It's very simple. It goes like this. Number one, no longer take confidence in our self-trust. Self-trust is what can I do to make self look good? We are to put no confidence in the flesh. So we lay that aside. Sometimes we look in the mirror and we think we are greater than we are. We are not the lion, we are the kitty cat. Meow! But when we look, we think we're great. I know who I am, I am a baby kitten. Actually, friends, I am a Filipino dog. That's who I am. Yeah, yeah. I, I am scrappy. I run around, I'm happy, I do whatever I can with whatever is given to me. That's who I've always been. And when I first saw the Filipino dog, I said, now that's my spirit animal right there. A happy, crazy, running around, free Filipino dog. But this little cat, when we look at ourselves, we must be honest with ourselves. We will never walk into greatness on our own. In fact, Eva, every human that's come into greatness, somebody has helped them in that walk. If things hadn't been fallen into place, if health would not have come, if you not, would not have been born where you were born, if you were not given those opportunities, those things would not have propelled you. But the joy of it is, is that the Lord God will give us the opportunities and he will propel us, but we must trust him. Why do we not trust God sometimes? Why do we not put our self-trust down? It is because the number two problem, mistrust. Mistrust comes because other people have hurt us. Go to the next one, mistrust. When trust is broken, there is a gap. And in that gap can come mistrust. And it can be, and it can fill us with fear or reservations, unwillingness to trust again. And what I suggest to us this very day, that yes, there are people who may have harmed us or hurt us. For some of us, even our, our dreams are dashed. But I'm asking you to trust not in man, but to trust in God. Allow him because you know what he loves to do? He loves to heal those of us who are broken. He takes our brokenness and makes us beautiful. That's who he is, that's what he does. And so do not hide self-trust so that nobody sees your brokenness. Tell the truth about our brokenness. Step out of mistrust and allow God to have your trust. And when we do that, that's what it's costing us. That's not that much. I can't do it on myself. Goodbye, self-trust. Mistrust, I'm nervous to trust God again. Step out and trust him, that's what it'll cost you. And the third thing is that at some point, this is what it'll ultimately cost you. If you want to move forward in God's kingdom, you will need to make a choice. It's not just going to happen because you think about it or that you want it. At some point in our lives, we must make a choice. The cost of being made alive in Christ 
is for you and I to choose Christ. To lay down our lives and to pick up His. Just lay it down and pick His up. So I'm asking you today to consider the power of being able to lay it down. He will pick us up when we do. As a young child, my father died at age 14. And I wept in the evenings out of loneliness and hurt. And on one morning while, while I was crying, I heard God say to me, why are you crying? And I said, you know why my father died. Because as a 14 year old, I needed my father to help me to become a man. I knew that. And I was crying. He, he asked again, he said, why are you crying? And I stopped because he asked me again and then I figured it out. I said, I'm crying because I'm afraid my father is in hell. I had never seen any evidence that he loved Christ. And he said to me, God said to me, you are going to have to trust me with your father. And I said to him, what choice do I have but to trust you with him? Do you understand? We make a choice out like it's a hard thing. People, eternal life or human life, what choice do we have? What choice is there? Heaven or hell, what choice is there? God's word tells us in Hebrews 9, 27, and inasmuch as it is pointed for man to die once, and after this comes judgment. What choice do we have? Let's choose him. But in the choice, we make the choice with joy. We make the, the choice with the opportunity to be forever changed. I want to acknowledge now the last point, that eternal life not only is his kingdom we're seeking, not only will it cost us something, but number three, that when we discover eternal life, then it gives us access to the throne of God now. That's the important part. Are you ready to hear how now works? I call now, wow. If this is true, friends, if what I'm about to say is true, this world is upside down. As a young child, I didn't want to do everything my father would say. And so I'd say, why, why, why? Why do I have to do that? Why do I have to do that? And then he would get tired of it, because with seven children, that's a lot of whys, right? And so he would end up just saying, because I said so. Have you ever heard that any children? Why, Dad, why, Dad? Because I said so. And so we would do it. What I want you to understand now is there's a great because. This is what I now call the great because. Eternal life gives us access to God and his forever kingdom now because of these things. Number one, because God is good. He's good. He can share now. God doesn't know how not to be good because good is in him. And good always wins in God's forever kingdom. God is good. Number two, because he throws away our self-righteousness into the sea of forgetfulness. He throws our sin as far as away as the east is from the west. That's why, because of that, he has made us new. Because he ever lives to intercede and to pray for us. This is God's word. Why? Because he is praying for us right now. Why? Because no one can snatch us from the Father's hand according to Jesus. Why should we trust him? Why should we walk in his forever kingdom? Because we have been given access 
to the very throne of God. And there's one more reason. Because God says so. <laughs> because God says so. You can trust me. You can access. Ephesians 2, 18 and 19. For through Christ, we have our word access in one spirit to the Father. So then we are no longer strangers and aliens, but we are fellow citizens with the saints and are God's household. Access. Ephesians 3, 11 and 12, the word goes on and says, this was in, was in accordance with the eternal purposes which he carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and confident access through faith in him. And this all goes back to the Lord Jesus when he said to his 12 disciples, and by the way, we know how he got his disciples, right? He's just walking along the road and he sees them. He's just fishing, he sees them. And he says, I want you to come and do what matters most. And they chose him. And then he said, I want to show you how the kingdom really works. And then he taught them Matthew 6, 33. He said, but seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you, right? Jesus then went on and said, I want to teach you how to pray. Do you remember the Lord's model prayer? Our Father, he calls God Father. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Come now, kingdom of God, on earth as it is in heaven. It's an imperative command form. It's not, oh, may God's kingdom come sometime. It's come now, kingdom of God, on earth as it is in heaven. Because God wanted heaven to collide with earth so that, so that earth would see what heaven really looks like. He knows when earth and heaven collide, heaven wins every time. And he said, so pray it. And so what he's done now is he said, I've prayed it, will you? I'm giving you access to the very throne of God. Will you be bold? Will you be confident? Will you go to the throne of God in heaven where you are seated with me in the heavenly places and receive from me that which is eternal, that which is love, that which comes alive when you take it to planet crazy. Can I give you this to take? And if you will, everything will be different. That's how it works. And then the beauty of it, and we know, he says, and when you do that, oh, by the way, and everything else will be added to it as well. Everything else will fall into place. So in America, this is what we do. I'm going to go after everything else and hope God's kingdom, right? Filipinos, I hope that if you uh, do come to America, that you bring your culture, that you bring your way of life, and that you get out alive. <laughs> I hope that you are able to impart greatness because you, you have greatness in you. It's your destiny. But don't, don't try to escape. We have no need to escape. Instead, would you slow down and get some of that from heaven and bring it to your life right now and allow God to use it however he wants. Don't seek to live the American dream. Seek his forever kingdom. Break into heaven. When we elevate man's kingdom, when we elevate man's kingdom, God's kingdom waits. If we elevate man's kingdom, God's kingdom waits. When we elevate God, everything falls into place.
I thank you, body of Christ, for being able to lift one another up, to elevate God, to find God in the middle of your life right now, and to be able to get so close to him that it's hard to tell when you're in heaven and when you're on earth. May you live that way. I'd like to respond to some of those in my American family now. And fellow Americans in my own family, we hold back choosing sometimes, choosing God. We've heard so much. We've seen, we've seen so many things that call themselves Christian and are not. And our hearts have grown calloused and our ears are tired of hearing. How many more podcasts can we listen to, Americans? But today, may God touch our ears, may God touch our hearts, and may we choose him. Choose him. Let it cost us something. Put down our self-righteousness, our need to be right, our need to be first. Put it down. Put down self-righteousness, pick up Jesus' righteousness. That's the exchange he's looking for. And I'm asking you, whether you're Filipino, American, I'm asking you this day, do you believe God loves you? Do you believe God loves you? What are you going to do with it? Do you believe God would forgive you because he loves you? Then let's ask him to forgive us. And now the very last, very simple thing. Do you want to choose him to live here? If you haven't, I'm just saying, hey, Lord God, thank you for loving me, for forgiving me. There's no other God like you. No other God. And regardless of what I've seen or where I've been, or I'm asking you just to come and live in my heart and make me new. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Pastora Pauline Fua from Singapore. Huh? Shalom, greetings in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Hallelujah. I slow down to speed up. Let's just raise up our hands to the Lord. Woo! Hallelujah! Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill our love with the Father's glory. Bless, very bless. Set your hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Fill our luck with the Father's glory. Bless, very bless. Set your hearts. On fire. This morning, as I was in Bishop's office, and I saw the vision of an open heaven, and I saw whew, fire, flames of fire. And it's like petrol, petrol. When you pour petrol on fire, it is set ablaze. And this is what I'm declaring to you this morning. The Lord is saying, this shine, a right shine. For the light has come in this place. And he's saying to you, step out of your boat. Step out of your comfort zone. Step up from where you are and step up. We thank God for the word that's given to this morning. It is like the Spirit of God has His word to say. Keep this, the message and the prophetic word that is given to you this morning. 
He says, slow down. This morning, as I was preparing to get ready by 8.15, that is the time they told me, Bishop Frank is going to pick us up. But by 8.10, I received a call that, come down, he's already here. <laughs> and then I said, I told this 8.15, I keep my time. So, you know what happened? As I was rushing, because I cannot get, let Bishop Frank wake wait for us. And as I was rushing, the Spirit of the Lord slowed me down. So what is the Lord saying? As He has given you the task, as He has given you the things to do to accomplish in His kingdom, you need to slow down in the presence of God. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord, to wait. As this is the season for you to bring in the harvest of soul. And as Apostle Jackie prophesied this morning, that this place is not enough. There is going to be an explosion in this place. And I say, there is going to be an explosion in this place. I say, I declare, and I declare, I declare there is going to be an explosion in this place. But unless you learn to wait upon the Lord, you will not be able to run. That was a very good illustration just now. You will be weary. But if you wait upon the Lord, you shall mount up with wings as an eagle. The eagle is the king in the sky. Not even the storms. He's not afraid of the storm. The eagle has the vision. When he see the storms coming, he did not run. He did not flee from the storm, but he uses the storm to cause him to so higher. Hallelujah. Oh, this is the time to say hallelujah. Wait upon the Lord. Slow down to wait upon the Lord. So I slow down and I say, this is my prayer before I go out. Order my steps. Order my mouth. Order everything about me. The fire of the Lord is in this place, beloved people of God. And before I go further, I just want to speak this into the atmosphere. Whatever we decree the word of the Lord in this place, it shall come to pass. Because in the book of Job, you will declare a thing and it will be established for you things which were told And it will be established for you, so light will shine on your way. Light will shine on your way. It will be established. Now we are going to read from Luke 1 45. Oh. Blessed is she who believe, for there will be a fulfillment. Of those things which were told to TLBC from the Lord. Blessed is she who believe, for there will be a fulfillment 
of those things which were told TLBC from the Lord. This word was given to Mary when she conceived Jesus in her womb. And beloved, as last night I was praying, I felt that I was going to give birth. I was praying for this church. I felt I'm going to give birth. And it's going to really be delivered anymore, my beloved people of God. Arise and wake up. Learn to wait upon the Lord for the things that are coming. And the things that are coming are so great that even storms will come. But you will be able to stand if you slow down to wait upon the Lord. Many are rushing, 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 rushing. Rushing, 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 rushing. We are not Russians. We are Filipinos! I'm also part of Filipino. I'm also part of Filipino. My sister-in-law is a Filipino. And I was pastoring and heading the Filipino fellowship. And on my 50th birthday, the Lord said to give three tables to the Filipinos. You have a very special place in the heart of God, beloved. And what the Lord has bestowed on you is not for you to just sit down and do nothing. But the Lord is saying, arise and shine for the light has come. Let your light so shine before men that they will see the good works and glorify the Father. Glorify the Father. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Spirit bless, set our hearts on fire. Bishop, friends, this fire. Please, Bishop, please, there's a tool tape there. Just a little bit, a little bit more, yes. Pastor Edith, Pastor Edith, you don't move, stay a little bit more in front. Pastor Edith, go behind him, hug him as one, hold him, hold him as one. Bishop friend, please move one step forward. One step forward. Yes, both of you in the circle of fire. Oh, the fire of the Lord. The fire of the Lord. Bishop friend, lift up your hands. Lift up your hands to the Lord. Pastor Edith, just hold him. Just hold him. Behind every man's success is the woman. You need her. And what our, oh, oh, Dr. Marty said this morning about the two of them is really correct to the dot. She's a powerful woman, quiet, but powerful. Hallelujah. I don't kind of shake Father, the fire of the Lord in preparation. Apostle Jackie, the oil. <laughs> you would anoint them and pray. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. No, no, get to share that around cheek.
I felt the Lord want the, 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 uh, the leaders, the leaders, the 12 leaders, Apostle Jackie. They, there is a great task ahead of you all, and they need to be anointed for the task that is going, coming forth. Oh, the leaders, uh, Bishop Frank, the, your, your, your 12 tribes, the 12 tribes leaders, is it? Or your pastors, the 12 tribe leaders. Please don't, let's, we have no time. I need to deliver some the key words that God wants for each one. I think a mass one will do, Apostle Jackie. A mass one. Got no time. Yeah, mass one. Yeah. Krabakash. Men and women of God, I want this congregation to please be so kind and stand up on their feet, please. Please stand up on your feet. Please stand up on your feet. And I want these leaders to stand in one straight row here. Just stand in one straight row. And just let it, there be someone behind each and every one, please. Someone behind each and every one. I don't want a gap here. I don't want a gap. I don't want a gap. Please, please, be so kind and just stand here. Come, come. I want you to stand here. Thank you. Thank you. There is something I believe. When God speak through a man and a woman of God, we know to need to rush. Today we just heard slow down. And then we speed up. Men and women of God, as pillars in this congregation, I want to say unto you before Pastor Polina is going to call the fire of the Lord down. And I truly believe in the Holy Spirit fire. There is many fires, but there is the day of Pentecost that shift and change and bring a part of the kingdom of God down on earth. Amen. In the book of Acts. So I believe, listen to this leaders and listen to this congregation. The Lord said, and I want you to remember this day. I want you to write out down the date for this place. This place will be too small. 
and there need to, you need to go and buy another piece of land. Hear me out. Another piece of land for God Almighty. For God Almighty are going to bring people and leaders from the east, the south, the north, and the west. And this place... I'm saying this place, I am saying this place will be like a lighthouse. This place will be like a firehouse. This place will be a place like a beacon that will stand out in the region. They will be called the people of God. I am saying this place is going to be called the people of God. Now you're me. There is no coincidence that South Africa, Singapore, and America is in this building today. I don't believe in coincidences, man and woman of God. I believe in one thing, that my God, my God, I ordained my footstep. He ordained my breath. And when I walk, I walk according to His will. Hear me today. I have prophesied over America when I told them Donald Trump is going to be the next president. Uh, I can tell you today, listen to me, this place, Tarlaka, will be a beacon. It will be a place of fire. Many leaders will run here. Many people will come here. Even the people from South Africa, the people from America, the people from Singapore, the people from the UK, the people from Israel. Hear me out. The people from Israel. For there will be a seeking. There will be a seeking. There will be a seeking. There will be a seeking in their hearts to see the true kingdom of God that will manifest in this place thank you Lord thank you Lord I want you please congregation to be so kind just to push your hands towards these people and I want these leaders and I want to say leaders leadership is going to change the same way leadership has been in a congregation is going to change for the bride to be prepared. We will not do leadership the way that we used to. We will not do leadership in a can mentality, but we will start to do leadership in the kingdom of God ways. No more will it be about titles. It will no more be about anything else except His kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And I want to say something. I want these leaders to lift up your hands, please. Change and shifting is coming. And my question to you this morning, are you ready to receive the change that's going to come? Are you ready to receive, to have a change mentality for the kingdom of the Lord? Hear me out. Hear me out. Indonesia. The Filipino nation, there is something different about you. I can tell you now, Pastor Polina said, Dr. Marty said, but there's something about these places, there's something about this nation that caught the heartbeat of Jesus Christ in servanthood. They caught the heartbeat Hallelujah. of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Oh. Wow. And I'm going to give it to Pastor Polina to call down the fire for you. Hallelujah. To, amen. Hallelujah. And this is what I'm declaring to you right now. As I've just spoken the word of God. In Luke 1 45. Blessed is she who believes. Blessed is she or he who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which, which were told her or him from the Lord. And I'm speaking this to the TLBC, Tala Baptist, First Tala Baptist Church. Hallelujah. And 
Get ready your hands up into the hands of the Lord. And before I come, there were prayers for me. And they say they saw open heavens. Do you believe that the open heaven is upon you? Come on. In the name of Jesus, we're calling down. Get ready. Get ready. Oh, Rabaka, Shika, Rabaka, Sokurian. Harabasukiran. Get ready. Get ready. Fire! 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 Oh, come on, she got Get ready. Fire! 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 This side, Apostle Jaggy. This side. Harra baka, shika Fire! 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 Come on, she got another. Yeah, come on, she got another. Oh, Rabaka, she got Rabaka, Sakari and the Korea Karo Koshikara. Oh, Korabaka, she got a basakara. Oh, Rabaka, she got a puzzle, Jackie. Yes. Few, and then I'm because I need to finish what God is saying. Fire, 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 double portion, fire, cold, fire, 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 and the fire, 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 fire upon the people of God. Whoa. Bishop friend, can I have just 10 minutes to finish? 10 minutes. You may be seated. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Let your light shine. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. Please be seated. Please be seated. This is very important. <laughs> Matthew 5, 16. And I was seeking the Lord concerning what to share in this church. The Lord showed me a Christmas tree. And I was like, Christmas tree? Christmas tree is a pagan of the pagan. Okay, it comes from the pagan. And then the Lord showed me, we are the tree of life. The tree of life, Jesus, is in us. The light of the world, Jesus, is in us. And every Christmas, which is two months later, Christmas, we decorate the Christmas with lights, Decorated it and we let it shine. You see how the pagan duplicate what is the tree of life, which is Jesus, the light of life, the tree of life for us. And the Lord is saying to each and every one of you here, you are the Christ-like tree he's going to decorate. People sing, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. God is looking for a Christ-like white tree. God is looking for a white Christians. Cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Sanctified by His blood. Set apart for His glory consecrated and set apart 
for his glory. And how can we consecrate ourselves unless we let the Lord deal with our lives? Dr. Mati said, we have to die to our flesh. That the spirit of the Lord will arise in us. That the spirit of Jesus will arise in us to shine before men. Let your light so shine before men that they will see the good works. Good works. Good works. Good works of love. The Bible says, be excellent in what is good. Be innocent of evil. This is the time. If you want the Lord to shine through your life, you will have to let him shine through you, through good works, even to your enemies. What the Bible says, love your enemy as you love yourself. You have the Lord shine. You have to let the Lord shine through you. As he led you, as he lead you, God wants to shine through each and every one of us here. If only, if only, if only you can lay down your flesh. Whatever that is not of the Lord, cut it off. Break the chains. Break the shackles. And that is the fire, what the fire is doing. Refining fire. Sometimes, some of you here, you do not understand why the things are going the way it is. It's because of your calling, says the Lord. He told me there are hearts here that they do not understand why they are going through many of the circumstances and situations. And he said to tell them because of their calling. Naomi went through so much. And she said, call me bitter. But she didn't know the plans of God ahead for her. And she goes back to Bethlehem. Return back to the Lord your God. It is still not too late, says the Lord. Return unto me and allow me to do the work in your lives. Time is at hand, says the Lord. And as Christmas is around the corner, first Dalak Baptist Church, will need to arise as the tree of life. The Christ-like tree, like Christ, the Christ-life tree, the life of Christ, to shine in the land of Philippines. Hello. Hello. And it's the now, now, the wow, wow. Today, Today, whoever you are, God is looking for that heart that is making a turn back to Him. Whatever is your background, and God is showing me, just like Esther girl, she was an orphan, she was a prisoner, she is a captive, but she made her way to the king's palace. Make your way to the king's palace. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. Go back to the secret place. The King of Kings lives in his palace. The palace above all palace. That should be your secret place. And when you go back to that secret place, you will soar like an eagle. You will not run, but you will soar. The king's bird, the kingly bird. Beloved, excel in what is good. Many parents ask their children to excel in their studies. But the Lord is telling you to excel in what is good. 
And as you excel in what is good, he said, be excel in what is good, and the God of peace will crush Satan underneath your feet. Come on, everybody rise up. Rise up. Crush the enemies under your feet. I will excel in what is good. Say, I will excel in what is good. I will shine for the Lord. This Christmas, I will shine like the Christ light and the Christ life tree for the Lord. Hallelujah. God wants to shine in the city of Tala. God wants to shine in this church. He can only shine through your good works. Then they will glorify God. And I will end with this as I see the vision of King Solomon. As he dedicated the temple, he prayed and dedicated the temple. The fire of the Lord came. And the glory of the Lord filled the house. It was so thick. And I speak this into First Starlight Baptist Church. I declare this into First Starlight Baptist Church. Shine, shine, shine for the Lord. Remember the Christmas tree. And as you shine, it will be every badge, every good deed you do for someone, everything that is good, because no one is good except God. And as you do anything that is good, good, G-O-D, get at an O, it becomes good. Good is of God. If you do evil, E-V-I-L, you add a D, is devil. So remember, the choice is yours, good or evil. If you do good, it's of God, because no one is good except God. If you do evil, it's of the devil. So the choice is yours, how much you want your tree of life, the tree of life in you, to shine through you, which is Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs>